Hello, I'm Scott Kennedy, trustee chair in Chinese business and economics at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. And I'm delighted to be joined today by Scott Rosell. He is the co-director of the Stanford Center on China's Economy and Institutions. And he is my partner for what we call Big Data China, a collaboration between CSIS and Stanford to translate the world's leading scholarly work on China's economy into a language that the Washington policy community and the rest of the world can understand and to bridge the differences and understanding between those two communities. Scott, thank you for joining us uh, on uh, for today's discussion. Yeah, it's, it's my pleasure, Scott. It's, um, uh, I'm looking forward to it. So today we're going to talk about doing field work in China and collecting data and why it's so important. And you've got about as much experience as anybody I know in that effort. For decades, you have been going to China and not just doing uh, occasional interviews and picking up an interesting quote here or there. You have been able to do in-depth, systematic uh, collection of data that then is analyzed uh, in a variety of different ways. Uh, and gives us great insights into China and how China compares to the rest of the world. So I wanted to use this opportunity to ask you about the evolution of that experience and uh, and what you how things have evolved over the last several decades of doing uh, field work in China. But let me just start by the very first question, which is why is field work in China important? Well, uh, thanks, Scott, and. Um, uh... Why is getting to the field and collecting our own data interesting, important, teaching us a lot? It's I just can't tell you, you know, how much over the years that I've learned when I do this. And it's, um, you know, how we work in academics, right? Is is you come up with an idea that you want to work on, then you go do the literature review, right? You read all the other papers inside and outside China on a, on a topic. Um, and then you come up with your sort of proposed outline of, you know, what's the problem? And then my objective is to solve this part of the problem. And my approach is, you know, I want to analyze this and find out the answer. Um, and we do that before we go to the field every time, thinking that, you know, we have this sort of idea set up, but we want need to go prove it to everyone else. I can't tell you how many times when you go to the field and talk to people and listen to them that you almost immediately or very quickly you start to revise the problem that you're facing and the objective that you want to meet and sometimes the approach that you were going to take um and you then turn this into a survey form a questionnaire that you then give to whatever sample population you're doing and the answer comes out sometimes very, very different <laughs> than what you expected in the first place. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it opens up brand new doors. And, uh, and the whole key is you go down there and listen, right? Yeah. Yes. And engage people in these, in these conversations and then turn those conversations into questions that you then try to figure out, it, it, you know, this person I'm talking about representative, how do they, how, how do other people think about it? So, uh, and it, it's just, it opens up time and time again. Um, I'm going to tell you one quick <laughs> anecdote is I went down as a PhD student at Cornell University to study uh, why farmers in China were adopting this new variety called hybrid rice and what was the impact on output and what was the impact on China's overall uh, production of rice and rice price in, in markets, et cetera, et cetera. For six months, we surveyed these households and kept asking, why are they adopting this rice? And, and they they kept hemming and hawing. And, and then finally, one farmer, after about three months, turned to me and said, you know, I have no choice on this. The village leader in this, this former commune, which is now a, a village, he decides what we, <laughs> what we produce. My dissertation topic ended up being the economic behavior of village leaders in China. <laughs> and it turned out this entire new field of sort of local dynamics 
between uh, local leaders and uh, the, the people, and and it, it, you know, it changed a lot over time, but but it had a, a real big impact on how people thought and and what we were seeing there. So that's a very simple, um, narrow focus, but that happens time and time again when when you go to the field and see exactly what happens. That's an excellent example, Scott. And I, I think what it reinforces for me in the type of work that I do, which is interviewing mostly for qualitative purposes as opposed to putting together a large data set, is my goal is to be surprised. And boy, am I almost always surprised when I go out in the field. I love to be surprised. I love to have my original assumptions and even my framework blown up. Um, and then, you know, hopefully uh, I get to ask better questions, but I really want to, the whole purpose of, of the field work uh, interviewing people uh, is is to learn new things. And if, if you're not open to being surprised, then then the work doesn't really make much sense to begin with. 